Hi folks, and welcome to our worship for this week. Especially to any of you who are joining us today for the first time. For any who don't know me, my name's Gavin Hume, and I'm the minister for Westmore and Cox Lodge Methodist Churches, and for St Andrew's Church in Benton. I also want to welcome anyone joining us by phone this week. An edited version of the audio from these videos is now available to listen to over the phone for those who don't have internet access. So if there's anyone you know that might appreciate this, then please let them know. The number is in the description below this video. Whoever you are and wherever you're joining us from, I hope that sharing in this worship gives you a sense of being joined in fellowship with all your sisters and brothers in God's family. Even though we can't gather in one place at the moment, we are still one in Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, we praise you. That because there is nowhere we could ever go to flee from your presence, that where we are now is holy ground. We worship you in response to all those things in our everyday lives that have made us more aware that you are near and pointed us to your glory and grace. Forgive us for those times when we have failed to notice your goodness and when we have prevented others from seeing it. Help us to open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, to receive all that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's sing a hymn about the way the beauty and wonder of creation points us towards the greatness and glory of God, that our souls may sing with praise.
Bible reading today is from the Old Testament and is read for us by David Deeks. Okay, we're reading from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. One day, while Moses was taking care of the sheep and goats of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, he led the flock across the desert and came to Sinai, the holy mountain. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him as a flame coming from the middle of a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but that it was not burning up. This is strange, he thought. Why isn't the bush burning up? I will go closer and see. When the Lord saw that Moses was coming closer, he called to him from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He answered, Yes, here I am. God said, Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So Moses covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. What does it take to get your attention? My wife has learned over the years that if I'm engrossed in something, if she begins what she has to say with the words, would you like a cup of tea? She knows I'll stop what I'm doing and say, oh yes, please. And then she'll continue with, while I've got your attention, can I just ask you this? But what does it take for God to get our attention? In our Bible reading today, Moses is tending sheep for his father-in-law. And he's in the middle of nowhere, alone with his thoughts. We don't know for sure what Moses' faith was like at this point. How much was it influenced by his ancestry, by his upbringing in the house of Pharaoh? How much was it influenced by his current family circumstances, with his father-in-law being the priest of Midian, whatever that entailed? Moses might have been at a bit of a spiritual low. He may have been seeking meaning and purpose and trying to make sense of things. But more importantly, God was seeking Moses as he seeks each one of us, hoping to find a way to make us curious enough to wake up and notice God's presence that is always near, even when we're not aware of it. God reveals himself to Moses through this strange encounter in a number of different ways. Firstly, through a dynamic image, something beyond words. An image that combines the ordinary and the extraordinary. An extraordinary flame 
in an ordinary bush. A flame that doesn't destroy what it fills. It's something strange, fascinating, curious. And Moses is drawn to it, not to start with because of anything spiritual, but simply because it's a weird and unexplained sight. And he's curious to find out more. A dynamic image beyond words draws Moses towards a place where he can encounter the mysterious presence of God. I wonder what God might be using to try and get our attention today. And are we open and ready to notice? Second, God reveals himself as the one who knows Moses by name. God calls out his name twice, Moses, Moses. As Moses approaches God, as we approach God, we begin not as the searchers and knowers, but as ones who are sought and known by God. God knows us by name, before we can understand anything about who God is. It's not about us trying to get God's attention. It's the other way around. God takes the initiative. God tries to attract our attention, to find a way for us to recognize and respond to his presence, which has been there all the time, even when we're not aware of it. To help us to see that the place where we are standing or sitting, if it's in the middle of nowhere, or in your home wearing your favourite comfy slippers, it's holy ground. Thirdly, God reveals himself as the one who's been involved in the wider story of the life of Moses. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. God wants Moses to know that although this experience is new for him, he is encountering something that those before him experienced. And it's time for Moses to find his place in that wider story of the growing relationship between God and his people. Just as God is present when we're not aware of it, so God has been at work in the story of our lives and the story of the people around us, even when we're not aware of it. And sometimes we can only realize that as we look back and give thanks. Where has God been at work in your story? We tend to think of this passage as the call of Moses. And that's an important part of what's going on here. And we'll hear a bit more about that next week. But it's important that we don't miss that there's something else happening here. A pattern for how we encounter the mysterious presence of God and how we discern God's involvement in our story. It may not be a burning bush that God uses to grab our attention, but are we open to whatever it might be? Are we open to experience at any moment what Elizabeth Barrett Browning writes of in her poem, Aurora Lee. Earth's crammed with heaven, and every common bush a fire with God. But only those who see take off their shoes. The rest sit round it and pluck blackberries. I'll conclude with a few words from the late David Adam, the former vicar of Lindisfarne. 
God speaks to us through his creation. When we respect the otherness of people and creation, the holiness of life is revealed to us. The way to the holy is in the ordinary. The ordinary is far more extraordinary than we think or imagine. We need to reawaken our senses and see the potential of each encounter, each person, each blade of grass, each bush, to reveal the glory of God. When the eyes of our hearts are opened in this way, we will see a whole new world. So let's sing a song, praying for that kind of openness of heart in us, that we may perceive the glory of God in our daily life. Let's join together in a time of prayer. Gracious God, we bring before you our prayers for the world. We pray for all those who lack physical things, food, shelter, water, and all of life's necessities. We pray for those who mourn and those who are ill. Lord, for those we may help, may our hands work quickly. And for those we cannot personally help, we pray for the hands that will. We pray for all those who work to provide care and help to others. Lord, bless them and keep them from tiredness and error. And those they care for, Keep them from despair. 
we bring the names of those known to us before you. We pray for all in spiritual distress who struggle to hear your message or come to you in prayer. Lord, help them to heed. We pray for ourselves. Strengthen us to come through our trials renewed in faith. We pray for our land and nation. Lord, help us all to endure and to serve you faithfully. May our land be brightened by the light of the Lord as we leave these times behind. Lord, we ask these things, knowing that when we pray, wherever we pray, you hear our prayers. Thanks be to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I hope you have a good bank holiday and a good week and that you'll join us again next time. Please do share these videos with others if you think they might be helpful. A final prayer of blessing. Lord, as we journey with you, may we see all the things you long for us to notice. May we be your people in all we do and say. Amen.